So welcome to part seven and in this section I'm just going to quickly run through the flatten tool and we're also going to look at inflate and the basic masking tools which are very handy. So uh, I created this model which is a uh, separate from my puppet model but um, I'm just going to demonstrate flatten. So if we use a flatten brush basically it kind of looks at the base mesh and tries to flatten the base And um, so this is the basic flatten setting. It's kind of semi-accurate. It's kind of flattening the foot, but imagine you want this to be kind of perfectly aligned to the work plane. So it's kind of making perfect contact. So I'm just going to delete those strokes. And we've got some options here, fixed plane. So if I choose work plane, and now try again, it's basically taking that uh, flatten all the way back to the work plane. As you can see it's perfectly making contact with my grid work plane. And uh, smooth, I believe that just adds some kind of smoothing to the side, just gives maybe a slightly more kind of refined effect like that. And you can see that's now perfectly touching the floor. So a quite specific brush but uh, very handy nonetheless. So I'm just going to go back to my puppet model. I'm just going to delete the cylinder. This is uh, as far as I've gotten. So the next brush is uh, pretty simple. It's inflate. So it basically literally inflates the geometry in all directions. It's kind of omnidirectional. So if I just use it on the eyes here, we can see the eyes kind of bulging out and getting more spherical. And the difference to Amplify is Amplify kind of seems to be more along the normal. As you can see, Amplify seems to kind of exaggerate it in one kind of normal direction, whereas Inflate is omnidirectional, as far as I can tell. So next I'm going to take a look at the masking tools, which are very, very useful. Um, so usually they're located under Sculpt Mask. You can uh, snap this up here if you want. So I'm just going to click on Mask and draw a kind of mask area. Now my brush is a bit too big, so I'm just going to drop the size. And I'm just going to draw a mask for the nose there. And if I now go to, say, the inflate brush, as you can see, it's uh, inflating everything except for the masked area. So what I can do is, I'm just going to control Z that, and I can go to invert mask. So now when I use the inflate brush, it's inflating the bit I want it to inflate, the nose. And then you can clear mask, get rid of it, and we're left with kind of a little nose. Um, also when you're drawing a mask, I'm just going to draw something here. If you hold down control, it uh, subtracts, so that's very handy. The normal mode is just add, like that. And if you hold down shift, it blurs the mask. So there's a lot of functionality in uh, control and shift for most of these brushes. I'm just going to clear mask. The mask options over here, we also have flood. So if you want to flood the entire model, just click on flood and it masks the whole thing. And then you could hold down control and do a kind of subtract operation like this. And then what I could do is I could go to inflate and then just flood inflate. As you can see, it's only affecting the eyes. It's quite a strange result, but uh, there's a lot of potential. And um, we've also got blur. So if I draw a mask, instead of uh, holding down shift, I can just go here and click blur and it does a kind of global uh, blur like this. So there's a lot of possibilities with masking. 
um, you can actually hide masked so it actually creates a hole in the geometry and show masked so yeah the masking tools are very powerful uh, there's a lot of possibilities a lot of things you can achieve with them and uh, that's the end of this tutorial and I'll see you in part 8 thanks for watching